rabbits have always been a part of our lives, mostly as pets. However, trends have changed because the rabbits have made it to the dining table. On this week's edition of News in Depth, we join Penny Fanyarenda as she explores the world of rabbit rearing, looking at opportunities for farmers and health benefits for consumers of rabbit meat. Welcoming you to this week's edition of News in Depth, I'm your host, Macpherson Mukukam. Stay tuned. Rabbits are adorable creatures considered by some as pets as they hop and run about in their homestead. For other people, rabbits remind them of childhood fairy tales like Kalulu the hare or Kalulu and the tortoise. Rabbit was developed in Europe from wild rabbits. Kalulu the hare is wild. We don't have rabbits, wild rabbits in Zambia. So the difference between a rabbit and a hare is that a rabbit, the young ones, when they are born, they are naked. They are, they are blind, sort of, they cannot see. They are insensitive, so to say, you know? And uh, uh, they are inactive, so to say. And uh, in one liter, it will give about five to six, seven young ones in a liter. A hare, when the young ones are born, they are born with the fur. And they are looking and they are active. Rabbits have since progressed from being ranked as pets to income generating animals, helping farmers around the world earn substantial income. There is some European countries, they like the rabbits, like in Cyprus, Greece, Italy. You know, it's one of our main source of meat, you know, in the village especially, and we always produce rabbits. You have a lot of rabbit, uh, rabbit farms in Uganda. And some people actually sustaining themselves from, from rabbit farming. India as well, you've got big rabbit farms there. And these people are doing, it, uh, doing this on, on commercial, commercial basis. Rearing rabbits is increasingly becoming popular in most parts of the world. Estimates show that in excess of 700 million rabbits are slaughtered worldwide, producing about 1 million metric tons of meat. Countries like Italy, France and Spain lead the pack in consuming the most rabbit meat, but China beats them all, even in terms of production. On the African continent, Ghana, Nigeria and Kenya have several success stories in the rearing and consumption of rabbits. Adotay Brown, known in his home country Ghana as Farmer Brown, found it profitable to quit his government job in 2002 to pursue rabbit rearing. His sacrifice has seen him grow from three rabbits to 3,000. Per week, he slaughters around 500 and he sells the meat for roughly $6 per kilo. Uh, when production started, I reinvested the cash into structures. So um, by 2004, we had built all the structures from this one. Uh, in other words, we had then increased our dough units from three to a 60 door unit or 204. Now, from 205, middle of 205 to 206, we started producing and marketing 100 rabbits every month. We had then built up stock. So we continued until 204, um, the latter part of uh, the latter part of 2010. That is by December 2010, we were continuously doing um, 100 rabbits every month, 100 rabbits every month. In Kenya, a journalist retired from the profession to join the rabbit trade. I was uh, working in the, in the media. Uh, I had grown rabbits when I was young, like, just like uh, most other people. Uh, but then it came to a point where I decided to fully engage into this farming. And this was after I started uh, supplying rabbit meat to the local uh, hotels, or chain of hotels. Uh, including the Serenas, the Sarovas, um, the beach hotels, the safari parks. And uh, I discovered there's a niche in, uh, in, in this market. And that is why then, after that, I looked for my own breed, which I could be able to talk about from A to Z. He has since become one of the most successful business ventures being talked about in his country. 
With all this hype on the profitability of rabbit rearing in West and East Africa, we sought to establish how this business is doing in Zambia. This is a forgotten subsector of livestock production. Uh, this is an emerging uh, livestock, so to say, like uh, guinea fowls, ducks. These are emerging livestock now on the market. So, life, uh, rabbit production is extremely very important for us as Zambians. So far, some farmers are using their backyards, while others have taken it to commercial farms to raise as many rabbits as they can. Humphrey Kapapula is one such farmer. At his farm in Chilanga district, Kapapula is practicing integrated farming, which includes various kinds of ducks and chickens in his collection. His childhood love for rabbit meat inspired an inclusion of rabbits to his collection. We, we, we started with um, um, five rabbits, eh? because I had gone to a supermarket you know, to go and buy rabbit meat. When I was young, you know, my parents used to uh, bring a lot of rabbits at home, and so I've grown up with um, that kind of liking for rabbit meat. And then, so I thought um, I should just try to rear some rabbit, you know, for consumption. But when I went to one supermarket and, and I found that I, I spoke to the owner of the supermarket, and they said that the demand was actually higher than supply. So it, it got um, to me, you know, it got in, I got interested, you know. I said so. It's, a, it's something that somebody can do for a business. Aside from sentimental attachment to rabbits. Humphrey confirms that it has turned out to be a profitable yet cost-effective business. Um, it's a lucrative business, you know, you will not regret. I will encourage you, you know, to try, you know, start with one, you'd see you grow the numbers, you know, and rabbits grow, the numbers for rabbits grow quite quickly. So you, it, it, it's a business, you know, you'll be able to have some income, you know, for your household. The Livestock Services Cooperative Society agrees that rabbits have the most cost-efficient menu and requirements in comparison to other livestock species. Uh, if you compare a village chicken and a rabbit, the rabbit is the least. In fact, among the livestock species, the rabbit has got least cost because it doesn't demand much at all. For many who consider the idea of getting into rabbit rearing, Particular attention is given to its requirements. From the expert's point of view, rabbits are not as labor-intensive if compared to other animals like cattle and poultry. This is why Mr. Daka feels that anyone can rear rabbits. Now, for those people who have no land of some kind, in the urban and rural areas, people who are landless, whether they have got land, rabbit production is an alternative because they are small, they are easy to handle by the old, the young, even the disabled people, the physically challenged people, they can handle rabbits. So it's an emerging, fantastic uh, livestock production subsector. For a backyard rabbit farmer, Jean Spatunyana testifies of having little to trouble in raising her rabbits. She has been in the trade for close to a year and she has already seen its benefits. One, uh, they're not uh, very difficult to keep. Then um, the second one, the expenditure is less uh, compared to maybe cattle or pig or uh, poultry. The, the, the other thing is um, they don't need so much room, like big, big space. You can actually use cages, which are so convenient. And uh, the other thing is, um, they are just uh, easy to keep. In terms of consumption, grass and plant leaves are the major requirements, but supplements can still be incorporated. Jean affirms its cost efficiency. The expenditure is not all that much, because uh, like vegetables, uh, I buy them maybe a 25 kg from Soweto, uh, like uh, 50, and it can take me almost a week. The nice supplement, sometimes I feed them on uh, number three meal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Jean started her rabbit farming experience with only two rabbits, and within six months, they reached 80 in readiness for her first sale. The interest came from uh, when uh, I visited my brother, who is uh, 
a chief livestock production officer. Uh, he has a number of them. Then that's where the interest came from. I bought two. Then uh, a month later, I had uh, an addition of 10. Uh, then by October, I had over 80. Her achievement in less than a year of keeping the rabbits gives her confidence to keep going. The livestock experts also note that rabbits rarely fall ill so long one major requirement is met, high levels of hygiene. They have got very few health issues. Uh, if you continue with good husbandry practices, you will not encounter many problems with these animals. One of the diseases could be coxidiosis. As a result of bad environment, if the room is not kept clean, and if they are kept on the floor, and so on, there's also ear canker, those can be treated, but they've got very few health issues. You don't spend much on drugs, no. New Zealand white and the American chinchilla breed is the most common in Zambia. The most popular one in Zambia is the New Zealand white. I think you have seen those white ones, you know? But we have also the Californian, which is available. So it doesn't really matter any breed. No, the common breed is the best for meat. There is some from Belgium, very big, but I don't think that is an idea. You know, the common breed is the best for rabbits. With so much motivation on the technical requirements that make the business cost effective, one aspect remains unanswered. Who eats rabbit meat in Zambia? We get uh, all sorts of people, all kinds of people coming here to buy rabbits, you know. We get orders from uh, supermarkets in town, you know, that want uh, rabbit. The trend is there, but then the problem is most of the chefs are not creating the dish so that people actually tend to appreciate what rabbit meat is about. Okay, so if you look at uh, the way shawarma has come, it's been maybe the last three years, eh? it wasn't very famous on the market. And then now everyone is eating shawarma. So when I started with rabbit, basically, is um, I used to post a lot of food on my Facebook page, and it, it got a lot of people curious that everyone started calling and you know, asking how does rabbit be test, you know, because most people look at rabbit as a pet and, and the like, so you have to convince them that actually, you know, apart from it being a pet, you can actually, you know. So after a few people actually tested it, I think now I had a following where a lot of people now were calling and asking where can we actually get rabbit meat from. Okay, so now the momentum, I think, is growing and it's there. But I think the problem is that it's not ready available. We visited a supermarket in Lusaka, which apparently stocks rabbit meat. The demand is there. You know, we don't get enough rabbits. Last time I've got a person, if I bring even 20 or 30, buys them all at once. You know, the rabbits are very short. Very short, you know. In the 11 years of the store's supply of rabbit, there has been a shift in demand for the meat previously linked to foreign nationals. In, in Zambia, before people, they didn't like to eat rabbit. Now, the most of the people they eat the rabbit is Zambians. Not expatriates. Zambians, they like a lot of rabbit meat. Through my knowledge in the shop here, I see them. It's Zambians, they buy the rabbit. In order to bridge the demand, Mr. Petsas eventually introduced rabbit at his farm in Itejiteji, which he also supplies to the store. Unfortunately, that too has not been able to meet the demand. It is for this reason that he is challenging farmers to increase their production of rabbits. And even in Zambia now, some people, they start producing rabbits, including myself in Itejiteji. I breed quite a, quite a lot of rabbits, which I sell in Melissa. And it's very popular. We cannot cope have enough rabbits. And the rabbit meat goes between 45 to 50 kwacha wholesale. That's how we buy. So for somebody to produce, I think it's very economical. And the demand is there. Humphrey was able to identify with the profitability of rabbits and has experience with supplies to the local supermarket. Unfortunately, his volumes are equally inadequate. The demand is there, the market is there, and uh, sometimes we, we get to a point where uh, supply outweighs demand, you know, so, so sometimes we, we are even not able to meet the demand. We can't supply the, the market. The perceived high demand for rabbits begs answers to the question, 
Why is it sought after? Rabbit meat is better than chicken and uh, very healthy meat. Including all the doctors, they advise you to eat white meat and one of the best meat without cholesterol is rabbit. A nutritionist at the National Food and Nutrition Commission explained what makes rabbit meat distinct. Protein in rabbit meat um, is, is of higher quality than that in, uh, for example, beef. And the uh, reason being uh, rabbit meat is uh, higher in protein because it's uh, considered to be lower in cholesterol because it doesn't have much fat, uh, saturated fat that is, compared to uh, other uh, livestock or other ruminants. For those involved in rearing these small mammals, consumption of this meat should be promoted. Uh, rabbit meat is uh, actually white meat. And it's very, it has uh, high levels of uh, protein and, um, and vitamins. You know, with the advent of uh, diseases and everything, you know, a lot of people now are going the rabbit way and uh, they are buying lots of rabbit, you know, because they are they're good in terms of um, uh, nutrition. You know, most people always look at them as cuddly pets and, you know, but we need to change the concept and say, you know what, it's actually food. <laughs> Much as there is agreement that rabbits provide a lot of nutritional value, there is one major hindrance in the Zambian market, culture. As Zambians, uh, we have, that's not our culture. It's not in our eating culture, eating rabbits. Okay, one of them could be a rabbit is regarded as a pet, just like a dog. So you find the only small young kids keeping rabbits as pets not for food consumption. And also, a rabbit, as I mentioned much earlier, people look at it resembling a, a, a cat. It's not a cat. They are totally different. So these are certain myths which surround the low production and low consumption of meat. Culture and its influence on consumption of rabbit meat doesn't shock the National Food and Nutrition Commission who would still like to see more people consume this meat? It's, it's really about societal norms, um, what we are used or what we grew up eating. So it becomes very difficult at an older age to introduce uh, foods that you may not have grown up eating. If you ask a household generally, do you eat rabbit meat? Not many would say they, they would or even trying the, the meat. Um, so really it's encouraging people to sort of explore when it comes to nutrition, be more adventurous. So if uh, you've been eating uh, chicken and beef, you know, be adventurous and try rabbit meat. You may like it. Monira Babazi, a nutritionist and lecturer at Makerere University School of Health Science, also affirms that rabbit meat is good for men because it contains selenium, a mineral the body uses to make antioxidants and stimulate sperm production. Back home, Harry Meander, a private chef, in his quest to try out something new, ventured in preparation of rabbit as his special dish. He likens its taste more to pork than chicken. I, I like to look for new exotic dishes. Yes, I don't like to work with the normal pork, chicken, and you know. So initially what happened is um, we dared ourselves to do something that's never been cooked. That's not very common on the market. So I had a function. So then I thought, okay, uh, rabbit, <laughs> you know. So that's how I did a rabbit dish. And I think everyone that ate the rabbit enjoyed it. And I think that's how I got the interest now to say, you know what, let that be my signature thing. So I think uh, the way you met me, I think it was through people recommending on Facebook saying, oh, the rabbit guy. So that's how it came to be. He also agrees that rabbit should be promoted extensively because it's a healthier option. Other than that, it can fit any form of preparation. I know people compare it to chicken, but actually it's compared to pork. Okay, so why the, why the meat is very tender is because rabbits feed mostly on uh, vegetation. Okay, so basically a rabbit is, uh, let me say, 80% meat and 20% bone. Okay, so the, the meat is very tender and it's very, very soft, so it's closer to pork. You can cook it like any other dish, you know, you can grill it, you can fry it. 
you know, we can make a casserole out of it. So it's, it's a nice dish. And, you know, if you can't cook it, you can always go online. Beyond consumption of the meat, farmers are being encouraged to use the rabbit waste for manure, which is also a big business opportunity evident in Kenya's success stories. You know, rabbit um, urine and rabbit dung is very good for, for manure. If uh, there are people that are doing um, organic vegetable growing, you know, rabbit um, urine and rabbit manure is the way to go. And um, a lot of people nowadays, you know, are going in organic. So um, the demand is there and the market is there for you to use uh, even byproducts from rabbit. Expectations are also that the manufacturing and clothing industry has an opportunity to grow if rabbit rearing is enhanced. For our friends here on the market, like in the fashion industry, I think there was a time when you've heard of chinchilla. Chinchilla fails actually, it actually comes from a rabbit. Okay, so like a rabbit material. And it was actually grown for specifically for making those uh, fake coats. Okay, so people who are in the industry of fashion can actually, you know, use the fair to come up with unique, uh, you know, custom fitted clothing. So there's so much that we can do with, uh, with the rabbit. Um, in most developed countries, yes, a, a lot of fur is uh, processed, you know, they, they use it for clothing and other things, you know, but I think um, in Zambia we have not uh, reached um, that stage. But going forward, I think it's something that um, we are looking at, we are trying to uh, look at um, uh, research to try and see how we can um, use, because at the moment the fur is just going to waste. In order to grow the numbers of farmers and exchange of ideas in rabbit farming, Jin is proposing the establishment of an association to help farmers, as is the case for other agricultural practices. The ministry maybe should encourage the formation of a rabbit association so, people, so that people are informed, they've got that much information about rabbits. Because I think right now people don't know about rabbits. Some keep them as uh, pets and they don't know the, 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 ben the benefits that uh, the rabbits have. In addition, she would like the school pupils studying agriculture science to learn about rabbits. Others see this industry boosting options for export products. It, can, it has got market actually, it can be exported, you know. In large quantities it can be exported, but the problem that we have is we have not um, uh, grown the quantities you know that we must be able, that we can export there is demand there is a deficit you know we cannot satisfy the demand and if the value chain continues across in the region and in europe the demand is far far very very high for rabbit meat for health reasons and it's incumbent upon us just to improve production and productivity of these animals and above all, we put in structures and institutions which ensure that the meat produced in Zambia is acceptable in the European Union, America and Asia. This is things to do with the biosecurity, phytosanitary issues. So this is how we can fit in. The gradual increase in demand for rabbits is seen to provide opportunities for not only nutrition of value for societies, but employment opportunities as well. A close eye will be kept on those who want to see Zambia tap into both local and foreign market opportunities in the rabbit value chain. This is why we come to the end of this week's edition of News in Depth where Penny Fanyerenda was exploring the world of rabbit rearing, looking at the opportunities for farmers and the health benefits for consumers of rabbit meat. I have been your host, Mark Fasson Mukuka. Be sure to join us next week for yet another exciting News In Depth documentary. Also remember to give us feedback on our Facebook page, which is News In Depth ZNBC. For now, it's goodbye and God bless you.